Give me a little bit more. Hey, all my YouTubers, welcome back to another shenanigan filled uh, episode of Build a Camper Van. Ta da! Actually, this isn't, it's not on there yet, but I got it started. I actually didn't get a lot done. It's been a very busy week on this car, but it was a lot of thinking. As fast as I'm going on this, a lot of people think I'm doing this. When in actuality, I'm doing a lot of this. So there you have it. See how I get here. And I haven't even shown you the inside yet, so stay tuned. I'm not worried because okay these line up right here so when I cut this it was already in half before I cut this off because this was the square and this square was square square so I think we're all good with squares oh gosh we're back to boxes again uh, okay I'm gonna grind all this down and put like two tacks on each side because this is nowhere near ready to be finished I've got to do a ton to make it roll and flat with this line right here, which you probably can't see, but there's a line right here that that's the peak of my roof. When you put a level on it, that's where it starts to rock. So once I get a level, then this will come down to that height and it'll roll. And then whatever bulges out over there and here will disappear because I'm going to cut the sections out to make room for everything else. I almost think I need to cut another chunk out. I'll grind it if I cut that tiny bit of chunk out. Yeah, okay. So for now, we're gonna put this right here. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm putting a clamp over here on this side. Whee! Click. So these are only gonna be Hold them in place. No shaky, shaky welds. I don't care if they're good, bad, ugly. Just gotta make sure they don't blow through and hold this section here together and a little bit of this together. That way, when I'm actually down there, I can only do a lot of that. That is the goal here today. Quick, simple, itty bitty little tacks. I think that does it. It's all I needed. Because I removed the back half of the wheel well that would go inside of the uh, engine compartment, I'm going to use the fender to fill in that gap on the inside and then the, the curve on the outside. The bottom of this is lower than the bottom of the bug and I'm going to have to get a new corner for it anyway because it's completely rusted out. These are not going to be the tail lights. I've got some uh, early 60s lights for it. So I'm going to cut here to make this fit so I can bolt it in place so that I can make this all roll in. Then I can make a cardboard mock up of all the metal pieces I'm going to make for the inside of the, the engine compartment. There's a uh, fold right here. I'm just going to go over and down to the edge of this light and then, and then match it on the other side. For 
ready to start my hand. Okay, it's actually some pretty good metal. I'll be able to use that for part of this build. Okay, let's see what we end up with. These guys. Make sure that I get the right screw hole so it doesn't look because these are just far enough apart that I could accidentally put them in the wrong spot. The other question is where to cut for that outrigger I built, where to cut the fender on the inside just to give it a notch. Because I'm not changing the outrigger. I got an idea. I'm going to rough cut mark it. Cut that piece. Okay, because that bottom bolt's not there to hold it out. Okay. So what I need to do is tighten up these two bolts. I remember this for the other side. Oh, this is a tight one. All right, probably I've got it on the dolly still. I'm lazy. Now it's time for what I like to call CAD, or Cardboard Aided Design. I'm going to have to build a cardboard mock-up for all of that, and then make those pieces out of metal. The line right here is for my lid, which I'm working on uh, the new gap for. I don't have a Type 3 uh, floor to reuse, so what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to make the trough where the gasket goes. I only have the Type 3 engine lid. So I'm going to make a trough that fits the Type 3 gasket or engine seal and then I'm going to form it in there and I'm going to have to make the whole thing from scratch but I've already started on that. You'll see that in another video probably unless I put it in here. I don't know. So the, whoop, the, the key now is to form that all in cardboard and then of course I'll have to put the fender on the other side once that's all in there. I will start making those pieces out of the 16 gauge metal. Originally I was going to go 18 gauge because this stuff is, I can bead roll it to make it fit and make it strong, but if I make it 18 gauge and I bead roll it, it's still not as strong and I'll have to put some sort of reinforcement underneath it. If I make it 16 gauge, I won't be able to bead roll it as easy, probably not at all, and then I'll turn around and I'll just have the support holding what's up. Um, because, for example, there will just be a straight piece because it only has to come from here to there. So what's that, five inches, six inches? That'll make a, a heck of a lot better choice.
Oh, that's got that air vent in it. Oh, interesting. I forgot about that thing. Huh. So that's the side the fuel door is normally on. Okay. Let's see what we can do. I'm going to use up this blade. That should be enough to get rid of that before I go into a new blade. A little trick I came up with. I don't know if maybe somebody else was doing it. But I zip tie the wrench to the end of the cord. Because I never put these on when it's plugged in. I don't want to bump a button. So this makes sure I always unplug it before I change the blade. Okay, there we go. Nice. So, being that this fender will be part of the wheel well, eventually there will be something right here. Um, I gotta make it airtight. I, airtight. I don't want the fumes coming in. But for the moment, it's just a little bit overhang, like so. Here's the catch. Because of the way I built the outriggers in this floor, I've got a two and a half inch gap. So I'm gonna to need to make a little weird box that's two and a half inches up, that's level out of some thinner tube to hold this where it is. And of course this side matches. This is a little bit on the beat up side, but that's easily fixed. And then that matches up. this to there and this to there, this needs to be an inch shorter. Oops! Nice. Now I'm going to do the same for the other side. Be right back. There we go. I realized I was trying to figure out why I was making so many mistakes for the center. 
and then I realize this pillar bulges out at the bottom way more than this one to allow for that cap. So I ended up cutting that right off. I'll fill it back in with some scrap metal or whatever. But the uh, they're all standing up now. And then what I'll do is I'll come in here and whenever I fill this back in, it was chopped haphazardly by yours truly. Um, not realizing I probably shouldn't have done that. But we can fix this. That's fine. I've got that piece. I will form it all back together, clean it, be rusted, blah, blah, blah. The point of the matter is that these two guys are going to support these backs. So that's what I got to do next. I got to get it all cleaned up and then put them in place, which means this piece will probably end up being welded in next. Then I've got to worry about that corner and that corner. The funky angle for the uh, crunch area. Another CAD piece. This goes here. Lines up with that corner. Now to cut this out, I'm going to use some 18 gauge. This is in load bearing at an angle. And I want to make a little cubby right here. Honestly, probably on one side I'll put a fire extinguisher. Because, you know. And then on the other side, maybe I'll put the tool bag. The nice thing about the 18 gauge is I can cut it with this. Uh, the shape just happens to be identical. So if I do it this way, and then I can do it this way, all I gotta do is cut the uh, rectangle out and then cut it down the middle. So. notch to make that fit and then that will be my little compartment this area I'm actually just thinking about doing a wooden box top um, I don't think the battery is gonna go down here I'll probably have room back there for the battery underneath one of those two sides I just made Of course. How did I do that? Ha! Ah, it's, it's too high up. Ha! Ah, try it again. Much, much lower now. Didn't move, did it? Nope. It did not move. Okay, let's try it again. Alrighty then. How do I do that? I'm going to attach a piece this way and put the oil filler on the side. Yeah. Okay, here's my mistake. This rigger is slightly further in because the riggers actually go like this on purpose because that's the body line of the car well this one is almost an inch over from where the other one is if you measured it from the center columns the pillars that means that this guy is nowhere near should be over here if it were the same thing because it would overlap it should be there but when I installed this outrigger, this piece warped on me a little bit. Not the wheel well, but the part that it goes into where I cut it, it warped a little bit. And that was what I was going by. So when I welded this crossbeam on, I measured from the bend, not the flat. And when the angle is done way back here, it's almost an inch difference than over there. 
Now y'all saw me dance on it, so I'm assuming that it's still strong. But if you crawl underneath this thing and start measuring, I'm going to tell you, you're going to find a mistake. That being said, I can put this right about there, tack it in place, give it some support here, and call it a day because this piece will have to be replaced to match this piece because this is all funky bent. So, it's just how it is. It just is what it is. That also messed up this guy right there. He's he's slightly slightly further back. So when I cut this to straighten it all, this become this became straight, and that's why this guy is slightly different than this guy. So I'm just I mean it is what it is. The outside of the car is lined up. You're not going to see it on the inside. Hatch will go in right here. I'll have to cut a little bit out over there on that side. Huh. I think it's time for a dinner break. Maybe call it a night. I don't know. I'm just wall. Lack thereof. So a delivery panel bus, van, truck, whatever, has no window. I didn't want to do any windows here because I couldn't quite figure out how to do the proper looking window and I want to put a graphic on later. Time for a wall. Got this big old sheet of blue roll paper that I've had forever. And it just happens to be Huge. So I think what I'll do is I'll make a template and cut it out. So I'm sure you've all seen this before. Trace it in paper or cardboard. It's all mine short earlier this week about my cat work. Well, this is part of it. This is not cardboard, it's pad, I guess. Uh, so the idea is that you trace it out, match it on the metal, cut it out. What I want to do is right above that bead line, and then fill in this hole. And then theoretically, theoretically, right, the other side should be identical. So I'll cut this out, run it to the other side, and see. My idea is that I'm going to make sure that it fits the top, but I'm not worried about the bottom, because the bottom I'm going to have to make that bead line roll in. 
Now here's a hint where I've got an idea for the air that will begin into the Type 3 engine. So the old Renault had a vent right here. And I could utilize a vent right here that goes up and over the wheel well back down into the engine. Or I can put the vent here that goes down into the engine. And it'll just be like a little scoop. So as the air goes over this wheel, it can go in to the engine that way. And then it'll scoop it as it goes down the road. Just like the Type 3s that have the big long vent on the side. So, let's see what happens. Right there is that bead. That's the end of my cut piece, I think. That'll give me enough idea that I can cut across. So I'll just put a rule on that. And then I'll connect these two with a straight line. Seems like the scissors are running right along the edge of the need, so I'll use that line just as much as I need the marker. Dang, that's really pretty. That is exactly what I was hoping it would look like. And I actually have more over here than I thought. I thought it was too short. I thought my middle was too short. Nope, it is right on the money. Yes, okay, make the second one. I'm whooped. Like I said, I didn't get a lot done, but it took a lot to get here, so I'm going to zip, 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 and uh, I don't know if these are going in next week or not. I'll probably tinker with the floor a little bit more, but for now, this really gives me the cool look, right? I mean, check out that profile. That's wicked cool. That's wicked cool. So, stay tuned for next week. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you can follow along. And share this. I've seen a lot of shares and I'm really excited about that. Because y'all are thinking, hopefully you're not sharing and going, look at this doofus. He's just winging it. But, yeah, I'm winging it. But, I've gotten this far. If you're not out in the garage doing it, you got to be doing it, right? So, that's what I'm doing. I'm getting out in the garage and I'm doing it. So, see you next week. Oh, and follow my uh, Instagram, because you'll see the sneak peeks, maybe. Now where did I put those? There they are. My wife told me I stole her scissors. I am in so much trouble.